Well, it's all coming to an end, guys. Sergio Ramos is leaving PSG, as is Messi. Benzema is leaving Real Madrid. Zlatan's retiring. And perhaps the most shocking and emotional of all, the weekend recap leaving Rabona TV. I know. I know. It's bigger news than Benzema and Zlatan. I know. Hello, guys. I'm Adrian, and welcome to, yes, the final weekend recap, not just of the season, but ever. A lot of you probably read the announcement on Twitter or on the community tab on YouTube, so this is it. The weekend recap has been a staple of this channel, but it's time for it to be retired. If you did read about this already, feel free to skip ahead as there are chapters denoted below both in the description, but you should be able to scrub to the next chapter. I know that there is a small group of subs that absolutely love this series, and to those people, I'm very sorry that I'm going through with this decision, and it may be hard to understand, but it's ultimately for the good of the channel. I loved the weekend recap back in the day when I was trying to grow this channel, but it's just too much of a strain on my life and my work week these days. And if you've noticed the inconsistency of the weekend recap lately, you'll also notice that I've been taking my life back a little bit. Every Saturday and Sunday, I've been consumed by the weekend recap. Saying no to family events and plans with friends every Sunday was getting really, really old because it's not just the watching of the football, that's fine. But having to produce a 15 to 20 minute edited video, that's a lot. And to be completely honest with you, I was beginning to resent the series and not enjoy making it because of that, which is a shame given how it's one of the OGs on the channel. Plus, it's not really what I enjoy making anymore. There isn't much depth to these videos because there isn't enough time for depth. I have four leagues to get through, you know? When I first started this channel, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to do timely content, evergreen explainer videos, all of it. But as I've grown as a creator, I much prefer more in-depth explainers and video essays. So when you combine how many events and experiences with family members and friends that I've missed over the years on top of not enjoying producing this series and thus the quality suffering because of that, it's time to unfortunately retire it. So apologies to the people that still enjoy this series still. I hope you'll stick around and watch our other videos, my other videos, because the quality of them is just going up and will continue to go up in my opinion. And without the weekend recap, I can dedicate more time and effort to those videos. That's all this means for you. More in-depth, higher quality explainers and essays. And I'll still cover the Champions League and any other big tournaments in depth. The timely coverage isn't being stopped completely. And hey, I may do monthly recaps for each league, which will be fun to look back on, but no weekend recap next season. All right, let's get to it one last time. I don't say this in a disparaging way or a, well, that was disappointing way, but I think the FA Cup final went about how most people would expect it. I think most people had City taking it and due to it being a cup final, I'm sure most expected it to be pretty close and a derby at that. Yeah, I can see why some would feel like United were only in with a shout due to a bogus penalty call and you may be right in a sense, but unfortunately, no matter how much I think it is a ridiculous way to punish someone by the letter of the law, the really stupid law, it was a penalty. I know the rules are the rules, but there's a reason why there are not just murmurs, but basically it's an open secret that they will be once again addressing the handball rules in light of the VAR age, and rightfully so. I can see how some would see it as counterproductive and confusing to constantly change the law, and it is. I don't disagree with you, but I'd rather avoid frustrating moments, moments like this in the name of tinkering with the law, iterating the law, until it makes sense to almost everyone. Will it completely save the handball law? Probably not, but I do agree with Grealish and his complaints about this. He jumped and turned, he had no idea where the ball was, and it came off of his hand as it was headed across him. Pretty harsh, you gotta say. But anyway, massive handball discussion aside, once again, like I said in my previous video, Gundogan comes up with another big goal, and another at the business end of the season. Gundogan is a big game player and deserves so much more credit for his performances, man. His first goal, not only was it a training ground exercise that they executed to perfection, but as far as technique from the German goes, that, I mean, that was also perfection. Nothing De Gea could do, hell, not even much that United could do. I don't know what you could say to your squad as far as a you know learning moment goes if you're Ten Hag. Haaland won his header, Gundogan was on the second ball in a flash, and hit a strike that nine times out of ten would either be hit in a more savable area for De Gea or a complete miss. I guess you could say, hey, we need to be on the second balls faster, guys. But beyond that, it's just a brilliant goal and also the fastest FA Cup final goal in the history of the competition. 
We already spoke about the penalty, which was United's way back into the match. And honestly, I think most United supporters would have bit your hand off for 1-1 at halftime against this City side. It's not that United didn't get anywhere close to their goal, they did. They had that moment around the 25th or so minute where they came close and they were putting heaps of pressure on City right at the death of this game. But even in saying all of that, City just looked controlled in this final. They almost had a third as well, almost a hat trick for Gundogan. Now that said, City's second goal was, how do I say this? Especially after raving about Gundogan and his technique. <laughs> but the goal was, you know, just good enough. You know, the strike wasn't the best from Gundogan. It took a touch and nestled in the corner nicely. It wasn't rocketed into the corner by any sense, but it was just good enough. But I think that question's gotta be asked of United's defending in this case. Not in the first goal, but this one. I know that it's a relatively common occurrence that Gundogan is open at the edge of the box in many City matches, but if I'm noticing it and I'm aware of it, and Gundogan is looking great, not only in this match, but in this end to the season in general, I'm man-marking that guy. <laughs> Not quite, but you know what I mean. Anyway, two out of three for City as they look to complete their treble with that 2-1 win over United. That was confusing how I said that. They look to complete their treble after this 2-1 win over United with... A, still confusing. They beat United 2-1 to win their second trophy of the season and they're looking to complete their treble on Saturday. There we go. <laughs> and this is the real treble, guys. This is the league, FA Cup, and potentially the Champions League. For United, one trophy and a third place finish. This has been a far better season for them where they have taken advantage of both Liverpool and Chelsea falling out of the top four. Chelsea by a long shot. That kind of sounded like a backhanded compliment, didn't it? I mean, I guess it was in a way, even though I didn't mean it as such. You can only beat who's in front of you, right? More signings needed at United, but I think you can say that they have made great progress this season still. That was their best points haul since the 2017-18 season under Mourinho. So there you go, backhand rescinded. <laughs> Collecting the most points in five years is absolutely a sign of progress. By the way, I've noticed a few times when people say that a team has progressed, everyone points out all of their flaws still as if like to say, no, they haven't progressed. No, dude, saying a team has progressed isn't saying they are the finished product, but argumentative internet culture has poisoned how people view things. Progress is progress. Progress is a process. It's not the final destination. They have done it again, haven't they? And it's not really a surprise at all. <laughs> Just like with the FA Cup, I guess. But at the beginning or even the midpoint of the season with Kolomuani and the gang flying, you would have backed Eintracht Frankfurt to potentially beat RB Leipzig in this final. However, something is amiss at Frankfurt. And with Glasner on his way out, which has been known for a while now, and with RB Leipzig improving greatly under Marco Rosa and Christopher Nkunku, the Bundesliga's top scorer, returning to form, it really wasn't that big of a surprise to see RB Leipzig win the Pokal. And Kunku, of course, got a goal and an assist in this game and let that red balloon fly for his kid once again. His form in his last seven matches of the season has been incredible. He helped them up to third at the death of the season and he scored six and assisted four in that time frame. Ten goal contributions in seven matches. What a guy. But everything I said about it being comfortable for RB Leipzig or how with the benefit of hindsight, it was the most likely outcome. Well, that's all true, but the match itself, Eintracht Frankfurt didn't roll over for them. The first half was cagey, three attempts each, only one on target and that one coming from Leipzig. But the quality chances and attempts were falling Frankfurt's way mostly. Kolomuani broke through and squared it a bit late to fluff a great chance for Frankfurt. Then you had Goltze hit a stunning volley that was well saved by Blasvich, but with a goal, the tide changed and it was a mega, mega fortunate goal for Leipzig. And Kunku's strike was deflected twice on its way past Kevin Trapp. But with that goal, the wind came out of the sails for Frankfurt, completely deflated while Leipzig were running riot for a while and Schubeschlei capped off a much improved second season with Leipzig. Well, second, full season, I'd say. His first was technically the 2020-21 season, but he made zero appearances after signing up in January 2021. The man was mega injured. So RB Leipzig win the Pokal for the second season running. Last year, Tedesco turned their season around to win it. This season, Rosa turned their season around to win it. Hopefully, the same fate doesn't follow him for next season and Leipzig can mount a strong title challenge. The Bundesliga needs that. They need all the competitive teams they can get in order for someone to finally make the most of Bayern slips. Not much to talk about in Spain beyond the European places, the 
relegation race. I mean, race is the wrong word. Battle, I guess. Good old battle. Tried and tested. And of course, beyond the relegation battle and teams vying for European places, there was the departure of a legend, not just of Real Madrid, but of La Liga, Karim Benzema. Out of all the players that were signed during the 2009-10 summer transfer window, Benzema was the last one standing. And I think it's fair to say that while he was quite the talent at Lyon, I don't think many imagined he would elevate himself to club legend status at a historic club like Real Madrid. 14 years at Los Blancos, numerous trophies and goals, a Ballon d'Or, second highest scorer behind Cristiano Ronaldo, ahead of Raul and De Stefano. Honestly, he's a giant and his departure has been... I think for Real fans, I can sympathize for them on a human level. I mean, sympathy only goes so far with Real Madrid supporters. You guys are spoiled when it comes to trophies and the players you get to watch. So my sympathy only goes so far, but, but I sympathize in the way that it went down. Everyone thought he would stay for one more year, one last contract, one last dance. And then those very strong and very credible rumors came out that he would leave Real Madrid at the conclusion of his current contract at the end of this month to join Saudi Arabian champions Al Ittihad. However, despite the strong rumors, Benzema gave a ton of false hope to the supporters by commenting on his future. Sure, if you take stock of the words as they are written, then you could see how they were, you know, still indecisive, unclear. Basically, he said that his future in that moment at the Marca Awards or whatever that was, was with Real Madrid. And that's not untrue as they still had one game to go. But on the day of what would be his final match for Real Madrid up against Athletic, the Comunicado came out saying he would indeed leave Real Madrid after this season. That's quite the whiplash for Real Madrid supporters. No, at least with guys like Ronaldo and Sergio Ramos, legends of the club, they weren't surprised with their exits. The writing was on the wall, so to speak. But here with Benzema, it was a roller coaster over the last couple days. Fittingly, Benzema converted a penalty to mark his final match with Real Madrid with a goal before he was subbed off for Modric two minutes later. And of course, he was given a standing ovation, a fitting tribute for him, Real drew 1-1. I also want to give a massive shout out to Joaquin, who came off after an hour against Valencia, thus ending his career to play until you are 41 with two stints with your boyhood club, over 50 goals scored for them, two Copa del Rey. I mean, what a guy. Enjoy retirement. Betis and Valencia also drew 1-1. Antoine Griezmann finished the season with two more assists to take him up to 16 for the season, and Atletico played out a 2-2 draw with Villarreal. He's my player of the season for sure. Gabri Vega, the hot prospect from Celta that has caught the eye of most top clubs, rightfully so, he scored a brace against Barcelona to save Celta from the drop and ensure they fight on in La Liga once again. Osasuna. We're at the opposite end now. They beat Girona 2-1 to return to European competitions by way of the Europa Conference League. Massive for them and so, so deserved. Arasate has done incredible things with this team that grows and grows in strength each year. I did a video on them. If you are interested in hearing about why they are sort of a model club and why their success is so impressive. And as we look at the bottom of the table, Let's go over what happened and who will be playing in the Segunda next season. So, Elche were relegated before the season began, in my opinion, but yes, they're gone, as are Espanyol. Here's where it got interesting, though. Valladolid just had to beat Hetafe in order to ensure their safety and try as they might, and they were dominant. They couldn't get that goal. Strike after strike, none on target, pretty poor. Well, that's relegation form right there. Almeria, Cadiz, Hetafe, and Valencia all managed to survive by the skin of their teeth. At a quick look at the top of the table, Real, Pip, Atletico to second in the end. Sociedad will be in the Champions League, etc., etc., etc. Not a ton going on in Serie A either, just sorting out who's who in the Conference League and who's in the Europa League. The contenders, Roma and Juventus, and Roma could relegate one side while simultaneously locking in their place in the Europa League for next season. Roma, who do they take on? Spezia, and it could be Mourinho's final match with the club, you know? Well, if it was, he left them with a gift as an 89th minute Paulo Dybala penalty gave Roma the lead and thus sealed Spezia's fate as a relegated side. With Verona losing 3-1 to Milan, Spezia needed just a single point to finish safely in 17th, but Dybala's goal sent them down and ensured they would finish ahead of 7th place Juve. Europa for Roma, conference for Juve, who by the way, defeated Udinese 1-0. 
Speaking of Milan and their 3-1 victory over Verona, they already knew going into this that they had achieved Champions League football for next season, which is massive when it comes to their recruitment over the summer. They have a lot of work to do in that department, and while they think of new players arriving, they said goodbye to Zlatan, or Godbye, my mistake. Too bad he didn't feature much this season, only four appearances, as he was once again riddled with injuries. Perhaps just to see you later, if those Monza rumors are to be believed? I mean, Galliani and Berlusconi tried to tempt him over to Monza in the past, maybe they've succeeded this time? No, because after the match, Zlatan spoke to the Milan supporters, he got on the mic, and he announced that he has decided to retire as he was fighting back tears. Another legend of the game, man. What a player and what a personality that will be difficult to match. Holland has it in him to match Zlatan's personality, but what Zlatan had was a ruthlessness with his words as well that set him apart, plus the ability on the pitch to back it up. Zlatan, we salute you. What a man. Other notable results, a Fiorentina supporter away at Sassuolo's Mape Stadium caught a fish in the moat that surrounds the pitch, so fantastic work from him and a classy touch to catch and release. Mind you, Who'd want to eat that fish? I mean, I mean, I imagine it feeds on beer and whatever the food is that they serve at Sassuolo Stadium. Who knows? It actually may be, you know, maybe it would be delicious and I'm being overly snobby. As we look at the bottom of the table, Spezia, Cremonese, and Sampdoria all go down. No surprise, they all deserve it. Verona deserved it as well, but only three can be relegated, so they hang on somehow, thanks to Dybala. <laughs> at the top, Lazio finished second, and then the Milan sides round out the Champions League places, while Juve, are gonna be on some conference calls next season. Okay, guys, that's it. It's a weird feeling as this is the last weekend recap that you will see, unless Rabona TV grows to a point where we have more people involved, who knows? Maybe there's a world where it comes back a few years down the line, but I can say definitively for now that you won't see the weekend recap next season. I thank you guys who have followed along since the channel, you know, started in 2017 with the weekend recap. You are truly appreciated. Hell, anyone who ever watched the series, you are appreciated. And at least this isn't goodbye from Rota TV. Just this series. I'm bad at this. I get sentimental. I get emotional. Only because I care, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching this video and this series. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. And thank you for everything.